Community Chapel. I'd like to welcome you all this morning. If we have any visitors here, I'd like to welcome you. If you guys want to stand with us, we're going to get started with a song of worship this morning. Are you glad this morning? Yes. Amen. Hey, if we got to get up and come and be here, we should be glad, right? Praise God. Well, welcome, welcome. I want to say hi to Cindy. It's good to see you. We have been praying for you. And uh, so it's, it's just awesome to see you sitting right there. I'm glad you put a chair between you and Vera, though. Huh? Thank you for considering. We've been praying for her. <laughs> well, I have just a few announcements to make this morning. Um, July missions is we're going to split it. We did this, I believe, last year and maybe the year before. It's going to be split between uh, the Freddie Hall uh, at the Navajo Reservation uh, in Shiprock. New Mexico, and Jean Beaver from Nicaragua and Honduras. So those funds will be going to them. That's for the whole month of July, which kind of fits because it's looking like it's going to be hot the entire month. We're going to go on vacation here in a week or so, and so Jeff's been watching the weather. And like our first three days there, that's as far as we can get with the weather right now is 100 103. I'm like, this is like being in Texas. So we'll be staying, huh? So, so yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to just let you know so you could put it on your calendar. We will be uh, resuming our Wednesday night uh, services on August the 24th. And you're like, well, this is July. Well, sometimes, you know, we have to be told these things a couple of times. If you're anything like me, I'll be like, we announced that? And I make the announcements. So, you know, I wanted to uh, let you guys know that. And um, men's meeting slash, I love how pastor does that, work day, praise the Lord, will be August the 13th. Men's meeting slash work day, August the 13th. We're going to do some things um, out 
he's making signals to me, out in the parking lot. Uh, we need to do some work on our parking lot, so that's one thing. So it will be hot, so you need to be prepared for that. Um, anyway, and we will be having a ladies' meeting uh, sometime right in there, and I will let you know as soon as I get the date and everything on that. Would you stand with me this morning? Let's continue to um, pray for all of those that are traveling and pray for traveling mercies. Um, pray, guys. I, I don't want to say this, so I don't want to say this out loud, but guys, pray because there's been a big outbreak of, I'm not going to say it out loud, but you know, um, so just be praying about that. I am sick and tired and sick and tired of that thing and we we just need to continue to put it in its place so ever since ryan had it maybe the latest i don't know who or what but we've just been praying that it will not attach itself to any of the rest of us no more we're done so uh Y'all agree with me on that because, listen, that's not of God. And uh, so we're just going to put it in its place. And that's under our feet because, see, we have the authority and the power to do so. <laughs> we don't have to wait till we get it. We'll just put it in its place before it gets to us. Amen. Amen. So be praying about that. Pray for your family and stuff that work out in those situations where they're more exposed and things like that. And uh, let's just no more here at the church. We're done. It's over. So anyway, um, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Children, you can be dismissed after the after we do the offering and um We'll just prepare to hear what the Lord has for us today. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to get together and worship you, Lord. Father, we just ask that you would be with all of us that are traveling and that are gone today, Lord, on vacation and a variety of other things, Father. We just pray protection over them, Lord, and safety, Lord. Um, and Father, we just pray right now that the Holy Spirit would speak to them and minister to them as they're on vacation, Lord. Father, we uh, right now, we declare that this church, Community Chapel, this family will not be attacked by this terrible virus any longer. Uh, it is under our feet. We have the authority and the power to call it so. And so, Lord, we're doing that right now. But in the name of Jesus, it cannot attach to us. We thank you for that, Lord. Father, we just ask that you would bless the offering, Lord. Father, we love you. And we're looking forward, Lord, to all that you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to
this victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Go! 
we just trust that our worship is just that, a sweet sound unto you, God, as we offer it up, as we offer up the praises of our mouth, Lord, and the intent of our hearts today, God. I just trust that that's blessing you, God, because we're, we're always blessed when we pour ourselves out unto you, and uh, we just want you to know that we do love you, Lord, we're so thankful, God, for salvation. Jesus, we're so grateful and thankful for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. Father, we just, um, Lord, we know that grace that pours out upon us, Lord, is your, your favor, God, that through the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice, Lord, made it possible, Lord, for us who deserve nothing, Lord, to have everything. So, Lord, we give you the thanks and praise for it. We love you, Lord. Give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Worship team, thank you so much. I am always amazed at um, musicians and those who can uh, minister in song. Joe Gomez, good to see you. And Kylie, nice to see you all this morning. I just, uh, what they... Uh, <laughs> What they do to, I, I mean, they have to think about so many things at once, you know, I, uh, and, and it's just amazing to me that uh, God blesses us with musicians and those that can do that. I want to spend just a couple of minutes uh, in prayer this morning before we move on to the message. Uh, I want to first pray for uh, Matthew and Haley. Uh, they are actually in the Dominican Republic today leading a, a group. They're a mission group, and uh, I'd like to pray uh, for their success uh, in that. Could you agree with me that they'll be very successful leading that group of, of uh, team on this missions trip, and uh, that they'll be blessed as well from it? Sometimes uh, when you're leading things like that, it's hard to be blessed from it too, but we, we'd like to ask the Lord's blessing on it. I want to pray for uh, Delene's family. Of course, uh, Kim's, uh, her aunt Sue passed away, and Delene's sister Sue passed away uh, this last week, and the funeral will be on this Wednesday. And uh, although not unexpected, still tough. Uh, you know, if you've ever lost a sibling, there's just something about it. And I lost a sister back in, and some of you remember, I think in 05. And so uh, we need to pray for the family for just a good um, peace and, and blessing there. Sue was in part responsible probably for our coming to the Lord. We've always attributed to the fact that she began to pray for the Lord for some help in her family years ago. And uh, we always felt like we were part of the, the help that came because she prayed and the Lord drew us at that point. And she had talked to us about that. And so we're grateful for Sue's ministry uh, in prayer uh, to us and through uh, you know, and, and that's very special, isn't it? When someone prays and things happen. And so uh, I want to, and I just found out that um, Robert's dad, Charles, uh, broke a hip this week and uh, just uh, need to prayer. And, and I've got a couple of sisters and, and their husbands that are just having some real health troubles as well, too. And uh, Cindy, we're going to pray for your final release from uh, your fall and uh, and all of those things. So, you know, just a lot of stuff's happening, a lot of stuff going on in people's lives that, you know, need prayer this morning. So if we could just take a minute before we do that and uh, uh, without mentioning it, but if you have a need with a raised hand, just, just hold that up and we'll, okay, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and take those needs. Would you stand once more? You got refreshed, you sit down, let's stand back up. Just acknowledge the Lord today uh, as we... Uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that, Lord God, you uh, did something long ago about our needs, Lord. Before the, the foundation of the earth, Lord, you knew that your people would need you in a special way. And so you, you, you made it so when man fell, Lord God, there was an answer. And his name was Jesus. And he came and he faced everything that we'll face in life, every trial, every temptation that that we'll face, Lord. He was in all points tempted as we are, but yet without sin. So he was able to pay the price so we could get what we couldn't have gotten before. Through his blood, Lord, we have redemption, cleansing of our sins. God, through the broken body, Father, we have healing. 
God, through the, the, the torment and torture that he took, Father God, we have peace. That chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. And so, God, I pray for peace and those that are hurting today. God, you saw the raised hands of those needs. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now to come and minister by your spirit, God. By your spirit, move. Oh, we call upon the name of Jesus. Miracle working power. Miracle working power, Lord God. For those who need a miracle today in their bodies. Father God, in the provision, Father, for their lives. In a relationship, God. Whatever it might be, Father, we pray for miraculous power to be poured out upon this body this morning. God, we just trust that, Father, as we call upon the name of Jesus. God, as the word says, we will not be disappointed. We will not be unheard. God, so we thank you, Lord, that you're working these things out. Father, we pray for Matthew and Haley as they lead this team, Father God. Help them lead well. Help them love this team as they just have met them. But God, help them love the people that they're leading and lead them well. Father, protect them. Keep them safe, Father God, for the return home, God. Father, we pray for those who have lost... Um, others that were so close to them, God, that you would just minister comfort, God, to those who are hurting in that way. And God, we know that you are the God of all comfort, who will comfort us in all of our tribulations, Father. God, all those things that we go through, you're the God of that comfort. Father, if those are needing direction, God, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, you have a way to speak to us, Lord, where we, we get it. We understand it, Father God. Open and enlighten the eyes of our heart, that understanding of our heart that we might see and know those things which you have prepared for us and see and know those things which are not prepared for us. God, continue to minister healing to Cindy, Father, and to, to Charles, and Father, to those that need healing today, Father, that we've called by name. We love you, Lord God, and we thank you for your healing virtue that goes out, Father. By faith, by faith, we are receiving those things which we have spoken for today. And we call it done in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If you would, uh, Stormy, if you'd put up uh, Proverbs 10, uh, 22 up on the screen. And if you want to, you can turn there. But we're just going there for right now. Proverbs 10, 22. <laughs> It's always interesting to see people's reaction to this verse. Uh, it says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. I love this verse of Scripture. It's an awesome verse, and a kind of, uh, but I, I like the way the Passion Translation says it. It says, true enrichment. And maybe, Stormy, we have the passion back there. You could put that on up there. It would be good for us to look at it. It says, true enrichment comes from the blessing of the Lord. And it goes on to say, with rest and contentment in knowing that all comes from him. In rest and contentment. How many of those are big words? Do you see a lot of rest and contentment in the earth today? <laughs> True enrichment comes from the blessing of the Lord with rest and contentment and knowing that all comes from him. I don't know about you, but I'm glad for the blessing of the Lord. And if this message is for anyone, it's for me. This scripture came up in my spirit on Friday, and I immediately told Kim that I was going to minister on it. I just knew. You know, sometimes you just know. And as, and I've actually had a conversation with someone just recently where this popped back up. But, uh, but Kim and I were talking about something that scripture just came out of my mouth. It's like, yeah, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and there's no sorrow added with it. Aren't you glad the true things of God don't add a lot of sorrow with them? So the, 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 the title of this this morning <laughs> Is it the blessing of God? Because the blessing of God makes one rich or enriches our lives, right? But it adds no sorrow 
with it. So the blessing adds no sorrow. Or the enrichment of God, as the, as the Passion Translation might say, comes with rest and contentment and knowing that, listen, he's got this. He's got us in his hand, right? And, and he's the blesser. How many know God's the blesser? Yeah, you know, you must believe. If you come to God, you must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them what? that diligently seek him, you know, because that's what pleases God. Faith pleases God. You want to please God, believe him. It's that simple, really. Believe God, and that's, that's a very simple thing been such a complex thing, but, but I'm glad for the blessing of the Lord, and I'm glad that it makes one rich. No amens. Isn't that funny? When we start talking about being rich, then what happens? That we, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. I'm glad for that. Aren't you glad for that? Now, if you want to argue about rich, I'm going to go find Ryan, wherever he's at, and I'm going to have him come up here, and I'm going to have him tell you how you're all rich. Because once Ryan gets through with you, you're going to know that you live better right now, no matter what your state of dwelling is. I know just about everybody here and where you're living at, you live better than about all the kings of old. Because you have running water and indoor toilets. <laughs> right? Now, they may have had indoor toilets, but they had to pack it outside after a bit. You know? They had servants to do that. But you live better. You have AC. Most of y'all have AC, right? Okay, so, uh, so here's the thing. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Now, no, no, okay, because don't make me go get Ryan. <laughs> don't make me do that, right? Don't make me use the Amplified Classic Bible either, right? <laughs> but don't, don't. Don't miss this because of this, this block we have with being rich. Because some of y'all was taught the poorer you are, the more spiritual you was. It's not scriptural, but that's what you were taught. <laughs> some of you mad now, but anyway. But the blessing of the Lord makes one, that's about half. The blessing of the Lord makes one one. Yeah, because you know I'm just going to keep this up. <laughs> there you go. And he adds no sorrow with it. Boy, that's key, isn't it? When we think about the title, is this the blessing of the Lord? And you know, we're rich. Amen. And there's many ways to figure riches, isn't there? Or the state of being rich. How many know cash is nice? No? <laughs> well, bring yours here and give it to me. And I'll <laughs> cash is nice. Yeah? Cash is nice. It really is. It's great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Knowledge is good. How many know you can be rich in knowledge? <laughs> Have you ever seen a time like this when knowledge was just at the, I'm going to what it? I'm going to Google it. I've been able to do so many things because I Googled it. I don't think there's anything that I can't repair or fix or build because I can Google it. Now I may have to go buy tools, Right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it because I watched a video. <laughs> now, some of those have went really well, and some of them have went worse. <laughs> but I think I can. Why? Because I have knowledge. I can read about it, and I can even see it being done. And I always feel like, man, if I can see something done. If you all need brain surgery, find me a YouTube video. I got you. <laughs> I got these little picks that in my toolbox at home. They've got some that's got little curls on them and some that are straight and some that are scooped. And I think I could just get out and get in there and just do it because <laughs> I watched a video on it, right? Well, okay. If you want brain surgery, sign up after church. We got a sign-up sheet, babe, ready for that. But knowledge is good. And how many of you know we're well supplied with knowledge? My Lord, we have more scripture I've been, I've been reading, letting the Bible read itself to me the last few days. 
but it's some guy. I don't know who it is, but he's reading it to me. Man, he can read. I just wish I could read like him, you know, that he can read. But here's the thing. When he's reading it to me, I'm hearing it again fresh and new for the first time. And that's helping me. And so I've decided that's, that's good for me for right now. It doesn't replace me reading it for myself. But how many know it's easy to get the word, get the knowledge of the word inside of us right now? That, praise God for that. And, you know, if we're going to if we're going to talk about technology, let's talk about the upside of it. How many can keep in contact with your cousin in South Florida? <laughs> you could FaceTime them right now if you wanted to and miss part of the sermon, but you could. Right. That's cool. Right. Isn't that awesome when people are right there with you? You can talk to them and you can bless them. But how many know knowledge is good? We're rich in knowledge. Praise the Lord for his goodness in that, right? And, and you know, according to Ryan, we're kind of all rich in cash too. If you want to look at the rest of the world, right? But let me tell you something, love is the best. When you're rich in love, how many know that's the best? I know the Bible said that knowledge puffs up, but love does what? Builds up. Let's say that together. One, two, three. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up, right? Love edifies. So, Ryan, I missed that. I was trying to get you to come up here and tell everybody how rich we are, how we live better than the kings of old, and we have running water and indoor toilets and air conditioning and all those things, right? But how many know love is the best? To be rich in love, that's one of the greatest things. That's, that's such a great reward, isn't it? And we're loved. We are loved. <laughs> we're well endowed with God's love for us. Each and every one of you. I, I know it may not feel like it today. It's not always how everything feels. We have to get over that. Yeah, we can't live by feelings. But what you got to take is the scripture. God so loved you and I even before we were accepting of that love that he sent Jesus. While we are yet sinners, and that really means just enjoying our sin, right? That Christ died for the ungodly, right? And so we're well endowed with love. We're rich in love. Isn't it amazing how rich we are? You just thought and think about this morning when you got up, man, I'm rich. Hit the floor running because I'm rich. But if we're truly rich, then it's in relationship with God and others. I mean, no, it's just relationship with God, just half of the equation to be rich. It's true. It is true. Relationship with God and people. One, two, three, say it with me. One, two, three, and people. One, two, three, and people. All right, okay. Because we've got to be rich in love from God and with God and in love and relationship with people. God never intended any of us to be poor in that regard. Can you say amen? No, it doesn't always feel that way. And sometimes it takes a lot to come to that place where you feel like that it's, it's full. But how I many know there's a riches in God and riches in relationship with people that we can enter into. Praise the Lord. And the Lord says, blessing of God makes one rich, but adds no sorrow to it. But something happens when we become so blessed that it becomes a burden. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. But something about it goes wrong when we're so blessed it becomes a burden. It becomes more than we enjoy. More than we can pay attention to. More than we can keep track of. More than we want to do. More than we can pay. More than we have energy for. Which then that leads to the question, is it the blessing of the Lord? We live in a time with multiple opportunities. How do you believe that? The more bountiful the opportunity in one's life, 
no more responsibility to sort out whether it is or is not the blessing of God. I'm going to say it again. The more opportunity in one's life, the more responsibility to sort out whether that is the blessing of God or not. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich or enriches a life, but he adds no sorrow with it. There is rest and contentment in the blessing of God. So is it the blessing of God? I know people who have had a car that has become a heaviness to them. Raise her hand in the testimony service and said, got a car! Yeah! And everybody goes, yay! A year later, they said, I got a car! <laughs> Tires wore out. Oh, yeah? <laughs> You're the only one that's ever happened to. <laughs> this feels that way sometimes, right? Uh, yeah. I know have people have had an advancement for opportunity, or an opportunity for advancement in their careers. They took it and found out it was not what they wanted. <laughs> that ever happened to anybody? They thought it was a blessing of God. Then it become a weight around their neck. Hear that. We're trying to sort out the blessing of God makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. We all live in a world people would tell you is high stress. How many of you believe that right now? Are people stressed out? Is God's church stressed out? The blessing of the Lord has rest and contentment in it, right? So we're trying to think, and that's what the Lord kept dealing with me about was like, this is a time of ministry. Last week was a time of ministry and prayer when we came around the altars and we prayed and we spent most of our time just, just praying and, and, and believing God for what he was doing in that moment. But today's a different type of ministry. Today's a different type because it is helping us get our minds right and our hearts right about the condition of our lives and how we're living them. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have that life, what, more abundantly or to the full. And we live in a world right now, and, and I don't know that you could separate out church folk from those who don't know the Lord and really get any less degree of stress on people's lives. I mean, it's a time of stress on people. So it makes me wonder, what is the blessing of God? It makes me think about where that blessing of God is. And why isn't it producing, if it's there, why isn't it producing what it should produce, right? No sorrow with it, right? Most people would tell you that they aren't getting enough rest. Hard to rest. Or they might, if they were honest, say, you know, I'm just not really truly contented. I'm just not really satisfied about where I am, what I'm doing, my purpose. And does that sound like the blessing of the Lord? No rest, no contentment. See, if we are missing contentment and rest, and we're finding heaviness and sorrow and stress, we might want to find out what the blessing of the Lord is or was in our lives. Could you say amen? Sometimes it's good, right? Now, I'm going to make this statement. Granted, in different seasons, there may be some uncomfortable moments. Just because you're uncomfortable doesn't mean that you're not living in the blessing of God. Somebody say, okay, all right. Because, you know, that, you know, don't go run, everybody run out and screaming out of here, quitting your jobs, right? Find out what it is the blessing of God. And there's different seasons in life. Some seasons you have to produce more than you do have to in other seasons. It's like that through the seasons of that we know, our natural seasons through wintertime, spring, summer, and fall, right? 
fall typical is that harvest when you bring in the harvest after after the waiting and the resting of the land and all of those things have been done and the spring brings bud and forth and flower and bloom right and then the summer is that growing season and then and our lives are much like that so again just because you're uncomfortable doesn't mean that you're not rich in the blessing of God right? but listen you shouldn't have to live that way for long and for life God has never called us to live these heavy, hard lives without rest and contentment. And if our thoughts are about riches mostly, when we think about, or when I think about riches, if our thoughts are mostly material, Listen, then we're going to have to check our hearts to make sure we haven't made some mistakes about what the blessing of God is. If that's where our thoughts always go is to the, 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 the material side of things, you know, then it's a good time to check our hearts and make sure that we haven't got something mixed out about what the blessing of God is. But just imagine this. Imagine own, owning your dream home to find yourself burdened down because you couldn't clean it well. Or you couldn't keep it maintained. Here's my dream home. I've got this dream home and, and I can't keep it fixed because, you know, there's just so much going on. Or working so hard to pay for it that you're never there to enjoy it. Many people, listen, are in those places right now. But God wants to, to know that the truth is the blessing of God makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. So again, we have to begin to ask the question when opportunities arise, is this the blessing of God? Is this what God intends for me? How is this going to affect me later on down the road where is the rest and contentment and you know I guess living uh, two months or a little over I'm going to be 60 so I've got perspective now that I didn't have when I was 30 or 40 or 50 right but now looking on that perspective I can see a lot of times some of the things that I wanted I called the blessing of God. You guys know the other half of that story. They were things that were motivated by me. Not that God minds giving me things that I want. How I many know he likes to do that? Don't you like giving the kids the things that they like? Yeah. Yeah, sure. But the thing about it is now I look back in perspective and some of the things that I think that I call the blessing of God, praise the Lord for this and praise the Lord for that, there was sorrow attached to those things. Now, responsibility is not sorrow. But there was sorrow attached to some of those things. Mark 4, 18 and 19, I'm going to read it out of the NLT this morning. It says this, talking about the, the parable of the sower, you know, the parable of the sower where he's putting out the seed and some fell in the hard paths, some fell stony ground. This was the third condition. It says, the seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life. Anybody ever came short of the word of God because of the worries of life? The lure of wealth and the desire for other things. There's a lot of stuff out there I'm interested in. How about you? I mean, golly, you know, we have this knowledge, right? And we have this, and there's all these things, but, but, I, but I look at this scripture and it says, but all too quick the message or the word of God is crowded out by the worries of life, the lure of, lure of wealth, and desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. 
So maybe this verse hits home a little bit. Maybe the Holy Spirit speaking in your heart that true riches from God are not heavy, burdensome, wearisome, and cause heartache. How I many know the blessing of God, there's no sorrow with it. Because we are so blessed and because there are so many opportunities for us, we really need to ask the question, church, is this the blessing of God? Is this the blessing of God? Maybe it's time to reevaluate what we've been calling the blessing of the Lord. If it's filled our lives with sorrow, then maybe we need to readjust. How many say that'd probably be in order, right? Right? If it's because of what we've called the blessing of God has kept us from fulfilling our purpose that God has for us then we need to repent, change our minds, and turn away and seek God for what is truly his blessing. How many know God has a plan and a purpose for each of us? What, you, what God intends for your life, listen to me, is important. You need to grab that with both hands. It is so important what God wants and has purposed and made you for. And you know, there'll never be true contentment aside from the purpose that God has created for each of us. Cares of life, distractions. Mm. So the litmus test really for God's blessing is this. There is rest in it. You ever been forced to make a decision quickly? <laughs> Why is that? It seems like so often times, well, you got to decide and you got to decide right now, right? But I need to pray about it. Well, if you pray about it, you may lose it. You ever thought that? Oh, yeah. Um, old pastor friend of mine used to tell me, he said, when, when God makes you an offer, the enemy will always make you a counteroffer. And I've thought about that so often times because we have a lot of opportunity. We're living in a time where I believe a lot of people would say they're not getting enough rest. They're not really contented doing what they know God has called them to do. And it's time to say, is this the blessing of God? And if it's not, where is it? But the litmus test is rest and contentment, purpose. Aren't you glad that we can wake up every morning with purpose? Purpose into our lives. We have, we have so much going for us because there's purpose in our lives. We don't just live kind of willy-nilly, just batting around. We have purpose that God has intended for our lives. And man, when you can grab a hold of that purpose, man, life is so good. It's so full. And also, there's relationship in God's blessing. How I many know that's such an important thing? Sometimes we get caught up in things that take us right out of relationship with God and others. Oh, yeah, God bless me. I've got this whatever. But now I don't really have time for time with God. I don't have really have time for those people that I love and, and God has called me to be a part of their lives. Have any of you experienced that besides me? So we got to start thinking, what is the blessing of God? And where, if I'm coming up short of it, where's it at? Because I know it's there. How many believe there's the blessing of God? Yeah, there's a blessing of God. It is, it's true. But if it's not there, then where am I missing? I believe that deserves serious time and energy spent on that thought. Amen? Serious time. Not just a passing thing. Because, you know, sometimes when you get yourself entangled, it's hard to get it untangled. How I many know it's, it's really hard to unscramble eggs? How many know God makes a great omelet? 
with the scrambled eggs, right? Sure, because you can't put them back in the shell, but God can use those to make a fantastic omelet. He'll even throw some ham, some cheese, some jalapenos, and all kinds of good stuff in there with that. See, and that's, that's where some of us are entangled, and we've got to figure out how to get back to where God had originally put us. And because we've given our word sometimes, I mean, you know, it takes a process. Because there's a right way to do things. How many believe that? God has a way of making that omelet in a way that, listen, that we can maintain integrity. That we can maintain a right heart and a right spirit about those things that we may need to get loose from. That we've put ourselves in the middle of. God has a way. God supernaturally works in our lives. And he's we're always working all things together for our good, right? For those who love him and called according to his purpose. You say he's using the, the things where we messed up to our goods. Yes, he can do that and will do that and has done that. How many of you know that to be true? You know, some of the biggest mistakes that I've made in my life, that he's used those to teach me and to train me, and then I've been able to help others because I don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't be like Jeff, right? Do something different here. But so God's always working all things together for our good. So listen, find the blessing of God that adds no sorrows with it. And if you're in that place, and it's not just a season, how many know you got to distinguish between a season and just a wrong spot? Do you believe the Holy Spirit can tell you those things? Sure, sure. He can reveal to you. That's why we pray that Ephesians 1 prayer, open the eyes of my heart, enlighten the eyes of my understanding that I might be able to see these things clearly, Lord, and find out because I'm missing it. There's something not right about where I'm at because it seems like it, there's sorrow attached. Now, is it your blessing, Lord? And listen, let me tell you a story about manna. How many of you know manna is, was a miracle food? Miracle food manna. I always thought it was Rice Krispie treats dropped out of the sky. Until they told me my blood sugar was too high. <laughs> I had to think of something else. But Rice Krispie Treats, imagine that, falling out of the sky, bringing miracle food. It dropped out of the atmosphere. I walked the dog this morning. It was foggy and cool, and the air was just wet, right? I mean, there was dew on the ground, and me and Bella Starr, we walked our 2.1 miles, you know, and we just had a good time out there. You know, it was just that atmosphere was crazy. Uh, foggy this morning. But could you imagine standing out early one morning and just food dropping all around you? Pretty cool, right? Food just dropping out of the sky, landing on the ground. Now, the thing about it was, it wasn't Rice Krispie Treats. If it was, it was just the ingredients for Rice Krispie Treats because it had to be dealt with. It had to be prepared what? And cooked and all those things. You all know that, right? Manna had to be prepared. It had to be cooked and it had to be all that. And so, but the responsibility was not a burden. But the mishandling of the food, the miracle became a mess if you hung on to it too long. Because there were certain restrictions. You didn't gather for the Sabbath. Or you didn't gather on the Sabbath, rather. You gathered for the Sabbath, right? And, and if you tried to gather too much, guess what? It stank, <laughs> stunk, stinked it, right? It wasn't, it wasn't good if you tried to hold it over, right? Because the blessing of God, the miracle food of God began to stink if it was mishandled. Anybody getting the reference? <laughs> And so the blessing of God, listen, needs to be handled correctly. 
And there's a responsibility to the blessing of God that is not the heaviness and not the sorrow. Did you know man was put in the garden before the curse to tend the garden? Did you know there was stuff to do? Adam didn't have a PS3. <laughs> he had something much better, I'm sure. <laughs> it's four now, isn't it? Or it's even beyond that. Who knows? Five, oh, five. God, I believe. <laughs> you know what? I've never even, if I've touched a controlled one, I wouldn't even know it. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying, though? But, but when we begin to think about the blessing of God, the Bible clearly states that it enriches our lives, makes us rich. And there's nothing wrong with it at all. It is perfect for our lives. But we must handle it correctly. Right? And so we see that like manna, the things of God must be treated with respect and not taken lightly. Oh, I think about how I have mishandled the blessing of God in my life at times. And I think, oh, Lord, help me to, to see differently, to spot this differently, to, 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 to turn and, and handle it correctly than what I have. And maybe you're there too. But the litmus test is rest, contentment, purpose, relationship. If we're mishandling God's blessing, then we need to ask God what went wrong. I don't think he minds that question. What went wrong? And we tell, when he tells us, we need to quickly do what he says. But what if it hurts? <laughs> I don't know about you. Every time that I've got away from what God wanted for my life and I had to quickly do what he's asked me to do, it hurt. <laughs> And I think the Bible might call that pruning, <laughs> right? Getting the dead stuff off. We uh, cut down this huge elm tree. It's not an elm tree. It's an elm tree, but I said elm. Elm tree a while back. This thing was massive. It was probably 60 or 70 foot tall, but it was rotten, so much of it was rotten at the top of it, you know, and all. And, uh, but I didn't have a chainsaw big enough to go through the trunk of it. And so uh, it's at Christoph's house, so he decided that he was going to make Sid a, a tree house out of whatever I couldn't cut up. So it's still about 15 foot tall with limbs coming off of it, you know. But the most interesting thing about that was, was after we trimmed this tree down to almost nothing, you know what happened this spring? Boy, these branches popped out of it, you know, and these leaves and everything. And this little spot on this tree looks so beautiful now, and it's got dead spots in it that big around, but it'll stand for ages and ages and ages now because all that stuff's been trimmed off of it. It wouldn't have lasted a couple more years. See, sometimes, folks, to get to the blessing of God, we need to trim some stuff off. Just like that tree. And then the, the pruning... I'm sure if I was a tree, I'd think, ouch, right? <laughs> but the pruning is not comfortable sometimes, or at all, ever, but it produces. The saddest part about that is that they knew the Word of God. In that scripture we read in Mark, they knew the Word of God, but it never really produced anything in their lives. It blocked the produce. All the distraction and all those things blocked the produce. So if we're mishandling God's blessing, listen, and, and, and listen, don't judge your neighbor on that, okay? I sat in a church service like this one day, and revivalist said those very words that I said a while ago. He said, a miracle can become a mess if you hang on to it too long. And you know what the Lord spoke to me was? Sell your tractor business. <laughs> That's a long way off that a miracle can become a mess if you hang on to it, Right? But I knew that's what the Lord had told me. And so I did just the opposite. I went and bought my partner out the very next day. Oh, I was in for a rough old ride. <laughs> because that's not what God told me to do. So listen, 
when the Lord begins to speak to you quickly, do what he says. 1 Timothy 6 says this. Again, I think I'm reading this out of the NLT this morning. This verse of scripture, 6.6, 6, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, really did something in my life uh, years ago when I first received the Lord as Savior. It says, yet tr true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Godliness, and I think another translation will say it this way, godliness with contentment is great gain. I was so ambitious in the world when I got saved. I was very ambitious, hardworking, hard-pressing, wanting to make the bucks, right? Thought that was going to validate who I was, was if I made the bucks. If I make the bucks, then, then I'm going to be somebody, and I'm going to be able to take care of my family, and I'm going to be able to do all these things. And that was the, the way I was the day I got saved. So how many know that just didn't automatically go away? There were some bumps and bruises along the way. But this scripture, godliness with contentment is great gain. In itself, great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into this world. And we can't take anything with us when we leave it. You know, you heard about the guy that had great wealth and he ended up putting it all in gold, uh, coin, and so... His instructions were that his wealth would be buried with him. And so, uh, anyway, they got ready on the day of the funeral. And uh, somebody said, boy, this casket is awful light. We thought that would be heavier with this, this, all that gold in it. The guy said, well, I just wrote him a check and put it in there. <laughs> You're not taking it with you, folks, right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, Somehow I'll write you a check and you'll take it out of there, right? Uh, so if we have enough food and clothing, I, I'm going to have to do a study on this because we make a lot of issue about housing, don't we? But you know, several places in the Word, it says if we have food and clothing, Wow. Maybe you're curious about that too. I'm curious about that. I, the more I read the word, the more I hear this statement. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be what? Content. I dare say most of our closets are full. I dare say most of our pantries are adequate. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped, listen, by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. And it goes on to say, for the love of money, not money, everybody hear me, the love of money, everybody say the love, the love. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with what? Many sorrows. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrows with it. Church, we need to figure out that sweet spot. They tell me, I haven't found it quite yet, but golf clubs have sweet spots. <laughs> you hit that from that spot, man, it's going to do really well. One in about every hundred hits for me makes it about right, right? Maybe that's the sweet spot, right? But you know, there's a sweet spot to the things of God. There's a place in the blessing of God. Abraham was a very rich man, and he's right in the pocket, right? So it wasn't his riches that got him down, right? But God blessed him with riches, because he believed God. And they, see, here's the thing. So many times that we don't have the riches, riches have us. And when that gets backwards, then that's when things get wrong. And that's when we lose the blessing of God. Because that's when the sorrows come. And I believe the Lord wants us to pay attention. 
right now, wherever stage of life you're at, some of you are just beginning. Some of us are getting a little farther along. <laughs> Stop back there mouthing, Margaret. <laughs> I had to watch her expression. Didn't I say that very nicely? I did, didn't I? Getting a little farther along. But there's a place for the blessing of God to be in your life right now. To be perfect in your life. That perfect will of God for your life. That's so pleasing, not only to God, but to you. That's so purposeful. Where your purpose is used for the kingdom things, the things that will endure, and that we're not so distracted by the things that will soon fade away. One time I preached a sermon. I went around the church one Sunday morning and I put on all the pews, everything. I just put this little tag that said, soon to be burned. Soon to be burned. Because all one day will just be up in smoke. So let's find out where that blessing of God is. Let's turn away from some of those things where it's causing us nothing but heaviness and sorrow and weariness and lack of rest and lack of contentment. And let's really turn to where the Lord has for us. Because the blessing of the Lord that's what we want, makes one rich. And he's not adding any sorrow with it. Let's stand. Father, I thank you. I thank you that every one of us, Lord, need to hear this. For those, Lord, that are in that sweet spot, God, Father, let that be an example to all, Father God, who have found that they're living with some sorrows in their lives. Lord, there are some things that need to be turned from and some things that need to be turned towards. And Father, for each of us, Lord, you have ability to speak into our lives what those things are. Speak to us, Lord. Church, would you ask him to speak to you? Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. Help us to know the way. Lord, if we're in one of those spots where the cares of this life, those things that, Lord, that we thought we possess now are possessing us, if we're in one of those places, Lord, teach us how to be untangled, to keep our integrity, to keep our word, but yet, Lord, to be untangled. Help us to be courageous and not fearful in this way, God. Lord, if our hearts are wrong towards material things, God, help us. Help us, Lord, return to a right spirit. Lord, we know that you don't mind to bless us with the material. But Lord God, you want us, Lord God, to handle it correctly just like the manna. Lord, you want us to handle our relationships correctly, Lord. And Father, if we've let those go in pursuit of other things, Lord, if our marriages aren't what they should be, if our, our relationships with our brothers and sisters aren't what they should be, because we're just chasing things, then God cause us to turn. Lord, speak a word to each of our hearts. Lord, personally apply this to each of us that we may know, that we may realize, that we may know what to do when we hear your voice, Lord, when you say this, help us to do this, Lord. If you say that, Father, help us to do that. God, help us in our obedience. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to prompt us from the inside, prompt us to do what is right to get us to that place where we're in the blessing of God and there's no sorrow added to it. And we give you the thanks and we give you the praise for the blessing and we give you thanks that there's not heaviness and burdensomeness attached, Lord, 
but you give it to us, Lord, freely and full of grace. And Father, I pray that your grace would be upon our lives as we, Lord, pursue this. We think about this and it changes us, God. God, help us to be godly with contentment because that'll be the greatest gain. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. And all the people would say amen this morning. Amen. Bless you. I hope today ministered to you as much as prayer season did last Sunday. And that you, you'll think and meditate and do what the word of the Lord is. Go and be rich in the blessing of the Lord with no sorrows.